Okay, so we've launched ZBrush R7. Just going to hide this, and we're going to go to Document, and we're going to go to New Document, and we're going to import that low poly model we just made. Just import that as an OBJ. You'll see that it's appeared here on the right, and we're going to set the material to matcap grey. You're going to click and drag and hold down Shift to draw out your scene. Let go simultaneously, and then press Edit. Okay. Right. Now, if you did this, then you might experience some problems. If you imported your low poly rock and you didn't have edit on, you kept clicking, you'll simply just keep drawing out the model several times. It'll be really annoying. To clear this, you just want to press Control N and you'll clear the canvas. Then just draw it back out by. Uh, clicking and dragging and holding down shift, release, and hit edit. Okay, so very quick navigation in ZBrush. To rotate around your model, you just click in an empty area and drag, and you'll rotate like so. It's quite intuitive. To move, you do pretty much the same thing, but you just hold Alt while you're doing it. Okay, click and drag with Alt selected. And then to zoom in and out, you just release Alt and uh, click and drag. Okay. Right. Now, what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to subdivide this up because at the moment there is not a lot of geometry. And in order for us to sculpt, we need there to be more geometry. Now, this was uh, just around 500 triangles. ZBrush measures everything in active points. Think about these as uh, um, <clears throat> polys, okay? So you pretty much want to double that number to know your triangle count. Now to subdivide up your mesh, you want to go to Geometry, and you just want to hit Divide. And we're going to go ahead and divide that up a few times. Now, what you'll notice is when I've subdivided it, the geometry has split, so I've got more of these quads. You can view them by turning on Draw Polyframe. Shortcut for that is Shift and F. Okay. What you will also notice is that I have uh, quite a smooth uh, surface on my geometry. Okay, now if you don't want that, what you'll want to do is to turn SMT off before you subdivide. So I'm just going to undo that. And I'm going to turn off SMT. That way I keep my sharp edges when I subdivide. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this mesh up. So shortcut for subdivision is Control D. So I'm just going to do that. And it's at 251,000. Do you know what? I'm going to subdivide it again and go all the way up to 1 million. Okay, but I don't need more active points than that. If I draw my polyframe, you'll now see that I have lots and lots of geometry there to work with. Okay, so let's go through some sculpting tools. All right, the main tool we are going to use is the clay builder uh, brush. So over here on the top left, you'll see your brushes, and the shortcut to enter any brush is B. Okay, and you'll see an array of these brushes available to you. The brush we're going to use is Clay Build-Up, just here. So the shortcut for that is BCB. Think of it as an acronym, Brush Clay Build-Up. Okay. Now, you'll notice that if you start sculpting along your model, the surface will change. If you hold down Alt when you sculpt, rather than extruding the surface, you will actually work into your mesh instead. Okay, just going to undo that with Control Z. Also, if you hold down Shift, you can smooth out the surface of your mesh. For this tutorial, we're not going to use uh, many other brushes other than Clay Build-Up. We might use a few later on, but we'll address that when we come to it. Most of our work will be done with Clay Build-Up. Okay, so I'm going to time-lapse this part of the tutorial now. What I'm mostly going to do 
is use circular strokes to complete my workflow. I'm also going to make sure that I've got my rock references on the same screen so I can see what I'm doing at the same time. Uh, that's always advisable. And yeah, I'll time lapse this bit and we'll see how it goes. So what you'll notice is as I'm sculpting, I'm not making any real big changes to that surface um, geometry. So there's no big changes to the shape. This is because we've already unwrapped this model. So if I make any huge adjustments like that, it's going to cause some stretching in our texture map. So really what we want to be focusing on here is just getting those finer details to kind of refine it as a rock as opposed to real big extrusions. Okay, so once you've got your rock to a stage that you're happy with, you're going to be ready to export out these details as a uh, normal map. So to do this, you want to go to your lowest subdivision. You want to go down to UV map, make sure it's set to the size you want it at, and then go down to normal map, flip G, and hit create normal map. That should have created the map. You then want to clone it. And then go to texture and hit flip V. This will flip it vertically, which uh, will be the right way around if you're using 3ds Max. And then just export it as whatever file type you want. I'm going to export it as a PNG. Call it low poly rock. Normal map. At this point, it's probably a good idea to save your file. So to do that, you can just save the project by pressing Control less and call in the project, whatever you want to call it. And it's also advisable that you save the tool. So this will save your rock sculpt and all of its subdivisional levels. So to do that, you just go up to where it says tool, hit save as, and then call the tool what you want to call it. Okay, so now we are back in 3ds Max and we are ready to try out that normal map texture we just created. So, Press M to launch the material editor. If your material editor doesn't look like this, you want to go to modes and make sure that compact material editor is selected. And pick your map slot. Click and drag that over your model. Okay. And you're gonna to wanna to come down to the maps drop down panel and you're gonna to wanna to click on bump. Put that up to 100. And then you want to go to normal map and then where it says normal click on that hit bitmap and then you want to locate your normal map so there's my normal map there and under gamma you want to set it to override just do that drag and drop it onto your model and then you want to go to views and go down to show materials and viewport as Realistic with maps. Okie dokie. Make sure that you are on the high quality and that you have configured your viewport to allow for maximum resolution of 4096 and high quality. Make sure you press apply and OK. Now you should see some of that normal detail coming through onto your model. Now at the moment it's quite hard to appreciate it because we don't have any lights in the scene. So let's go ahead and sort that out. So if I just go on to the create panel and I go to lights, get a standard, it's going to drop a skylight there in the scene. Doesn't really matter which way up it is. Make sure it's on cast shadows. I'm going to put this to 0.5. 
and I'm going to give it an ever so slight blue tint. Ever so slight, just off white. Okay, I'm going to do that. All right. Then I'm going to put in a target spotlight as well. And I'm just going to cast that with the rock. I'm going to angle that off to the side a bit, make it a little more interesting. Okay, let's just go under the parameters of this. Cast shadows, go down to intensity. I might keep that on one for now. And this, I'm going to give a little bit more of a yellow tint. So this is kind of like the sun. Uh, ever so slightly. Excellent. All right, I'm going to hide those lights. So if you ever want to hide the lights, really easy way to do it is just to go over to the um, display panel and tick lights. Okay. Now, it's always advisable to give yourself a bit of a ground surface. That way you can see how um, the shadows are being cast. So I'm going to under the create panel again, just go down to plane. And I'm going to quickly drag that out. Don't want it to have any segments. And I'm just going to change the color of that plane. All right. Now let's have a look at our work. Okay, so not bad. Got some reasonable results there. So there's some little bits of work I could still do to this normal map. I could put in some uh, finer detail in places, maybe some cracks and whatnot. But we can do all that on the next step. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to start creating some color map detail.